And I did a gig in there as well. When I got to minimum, they had a band room. So on New Year's Day, I convinced the screws to let me bring the PA system out into the Oval. Yep. And um, yeah, I performed the, the album that I wrote in there to the whole yard. Fucking and there's one of the most powerful moments I've ever had in my career, bro, was while I was in there, a massive fan of mine who was from a family that a lot of the family are in there, he got executed with a shotgun. I was all over drugs and all sorts of, uh, you know, same old. And I wrote a song about like, why are we doing this? You know, when it's the kids that are left behind. And uh, yeah, so by the time I got to perform that song in there, I was standing on the oval, looking at the two families on either side and I did that song. And yeah, like, you know, the chorus is like, he would have been here now if it wasn't for the drugs and it wasn't for the, you know, all this, no. he would have been here now. And man, I was just getting goosebumps, just like, All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Search. Today's guest is a rapper from Tasmania who first made a name for himself in the battle scene, both as an MC and also host, including hosting the biggest rap battle in Australian history, the infamous Cursor vs 360 battle. I seen that, lad. I didn't yeah. know that you hosted that. Yeah, true. Nowadays, he's a musician, comedian, and still somewhat fresh from a recent stint in prison. Welcome to The Search, Greeley, lad. Big thank, grills, brother. Yeah, thank Everyone's you always me, asking, bro. brother. You got this fan base out there saying, brother, you have to get Greeley on the search. Here you are, brother. Well, thank you very much for having me, bro. I really appreciate it. And yeah, just to give you some props, bro. I really enjoyed watching your journey. It's inspired a lot of people. Um, being a very honest person about yourself and putting it all out there, it's um, really you. uplifted a lot of people, including myself, bro. So it's an honour to be here. Thanks, bro. And have this yarn with you. Mad, brother. Thank yeah, you, eh? No worries. You're from Tasmania. Yeah, I grew up there. Yeah. I was born in America, but um I Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Where were you born? So I was born in Connecticut. Connecticut. In a yep. town called New London. And um my mother's from Tasmania and she went over there and met my dad. And um yeah, I was born there. And then they came back to Tassie. Yeah. And so I grew up there for a bit. My dad went back to America when I was about two. So I just grew up with my mum down there. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mad. Mm. The rap scene in, let's get straight into this yeah. rap scene in Tasmania, brother. Yeah, sweet, It pops bro. off. Yeah. It's a big thing there. Yeah, I was talking yeah. to Wombat about it. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's well, a big it's thing. It's been a lot of hard work, bro. Like, yeah. I started hanging around the scene in Tassie when I was about 15. I was on the street for a bit and used to go down. They used to have rap battles down at the waterfront. And so I'd go down and hang out the front and just wait for people to come out and have cigarettes so I could harass them. And, oh, really? You know, and, Where's yeah, this at? Hobart in Hobart? Yeah, in Salamanca, yeah. which is like the waterfront sort of market area just yep. down in the docks there. And um, When was this? That was 2004, 2005. Oh, yeah? That's yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> so I was obsessed with it as a kid. Yeah. Still am a bit obsessed with it, you know. But um, I go down there and... At that time, there was probably like, you know, 15 people rapping, and but it was a small community, so everyone went to the same gig, you know, every yeah, yeah, month, yeah, yeah. and it was, there was no social media, so yeah, it was yeah. a small community like that. And I think even he was like that at one stage. Wasn't oh, it? Definitely. I'm asking my, my manager because he's old rapper lad. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, not that I know about that old scene, but fucking yeah, it was but all like that around Australia. It definitely right? was, yeah. man. But you know, back then the only way you could communicate in the scene was through this website called OzHipHop.com. It was like a forum on there, and so yeah, pre Facebook and all that. MySpace was going on. Yeah, but um, the whole scene would go into this forum to talk shit and fucking you know banter and all that. And so that was the only way to kind what, of What, people connect. from other parts of Australia too? Yeah, that's oh, it. Oh, no way. Yeah, so that was, yeah, the only hub or sort of network back then. OzHipHop.com. Yeah, yeah. That is mad. And they, everyone was on there, like yeah. old school Sydney heads, all yeah. sorts of people. Mass MC owned it. Hey, boys, before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, I'm being legit here. I've been using the Lawnmower 4.0 since I first talked about it. I use it all the time, it's gun, trust me. It doesn't cut you, it doesn't graze you. I don't know how they've done it. It's got a little light on it, it's wireless, it can go in the water, it's a gun razor, trust me. But hey, it comes in packs. They got these little packages, listen, right? Ball toner, ball deodorant. You might have a giggle, but trust me, you, you, your balls need to be toned and they need to be deodorized, right? It's legit, it's a given, it's a no-brainer. Anyway, I've got a deal for you. You use code the search. 20% off, listen to this, 20% off and free shipping. Use the code the search. Let's see it, tell them I sent ya. Lawnmower 4.0, best ball clipper there is. You can use it any way you want anyway, let's oge. The Mass MC was like, um, yeah, definitely a massive founder in the early stages of hip hop. He was from Sydney. Was he? Yeah, or still is, I'm sure. 
But um, why have I never heard of him? Yeah, it's interesting, bro. Yeah. It's, and this is like I've been watching you for a while, bro. Mm. And I know it's so interesting because I know I know people that you grew up with. Like I've I know Sky High and people like yep. that. And, yep. But you were away for so long and you missed out on the evolution of the culture of the scene, you well, know. Definitely. So yeah. it's been really cool watching you get back into it and learn through all these, you know, yeah, these yeah. different lenses. Yeah, yeah, true. And, um, but back then, bro, we copped it on the forum. Tasmania didn't have it, Bob saying, rappers from Tassie, fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, it's a yeah. shit hole, it's an island. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. We copped it bad. Yeah. And uh, it was myself, uh, Dundee and Medusa. Yeah, yeah, that really, like, went out to the country and kind of got our names out there through battle rap, really, was the way that we kind of had to earn our rap, you know? So battle rap was a fucking big thing then, eh? Yeah, well, when I got into it, it was still the kind of freestyle era. Yeah. Like Eight Mile sort Where of, you know. We were talking 06. 07. Yeah, 06. Battle for Supremacy yep. was like a national freestyle battle competition that yep. happened in Australia in 2003 and four, And where they did heats in each city and then there was a big final in Melbourne and all the winners of the heats went. And yep. this fella called Justice caned it and took it out. Did yeah, and then he went to America. So Justice is a rapper from Melbourne, Melbourne yeah. and um, he was just the best freestyler at the time. Really? And as well, he was watching what was happening in LA with the battle Are we talking there. these, like, at this point, genuine freestyles? Yeah, genuine freestyles. Genuine, so there was definitely, a genuine freestyler? There's definitely a strategy to, like, yeah, he's a genuine right, freestyler, yeah. but as well, when you're battling that much, you know, when you see someone you're about to go into a freestyle battle, you're casing them out. You're like, yeah. what can I fucking yeah, say yeah. about this you know what I mean? So yeah. by the time that that beat starts, you've already got five things listed in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go this. You've got go your that. Points. You know yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, Justice took all that out, and then he went to America, and battled at Scribble Jam, which was like the biggest freestyle festival yep. in America. Yeah. And in 2005, he beat the best in America at this one festival and won it. No way. Yeah, man, and earned a rep for Australia across the world. No one had seen a battler yeah. or a rapper from Australia in America Justice, before. Justice, eh? Yeah, and Justice killed it, man. 2005 and- I'm gonna have to get him on here. I wanna hear this story, yeah, bro, man. fucking- Yeah, bro, there's a lot of people like from that, I'd yeah. love to see on here, bro. But um, yeah, when Justice did that, that was like, a fella from Melbourne just yeah. took out the best in America, you know? And uh, I was obsessed. I was probably about 16, 17 at that point, watching it just, fucking, let's go, you know? Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah so around, around that time, it evolved from freestyles, because freestyle battles had been done. Yep. People were using writtens, you know, it was very debatable. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you had that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then evolved into a point where they stopped using beats and people were coming with pre-written. So it's like, all right, if we're all prepared, then it's a different game. You know, mm. it's a game of chess. There's a strategy um, and you can prepare for someone. These are the ones I've seen. Yeah, so like that the was- the 360 around, and Cursor one. That's exactly yeah. it. So yeah. that was around 2007 and eight that it really started to evolve in America. Uh, this fellow Pat Stay in Canada was going uh -huh. really hard. He just yeah. passed away, rest cool. in peace. And um, that inspired Grind Time, which was, it started in Florida but then expanded to the West Coast. And um, so I battled 360 at the end of 2010. Yep. And we flew out the guy that was running the Battle League in the West Coast in LA to host it. And that's how we kind of linked up the Grind Time thing that when we did the 360 verse cursor, it was released as Grind Time Australia. All so right, yeah, that yeah. was like a division, a part of this American Battle League. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, and it was, that was also, not only did it just pop off in Australia, but America was watching it too, like because yeah. it was a part of that division. That's hectic. Yeah. When I got out, I was YouTube and heaps of those grind time um, battles. For sure, man. Bro, who did um, you know those freestylers, whatever they are, battlers, Iron Solomon and stuff yeah. like that? Is that they rapped on that? So that was yeah, they've done a few through that. Yeah. But Iron Solomon was the guy that Justice beat at that big festival no in two thousand five. Yeah, and he beat, he beat the Iron source. So but yeah. the, the Iron Solomon's a freak. Yeah, he's a he's, he's a freak when yeah, i hear that man. bloke's freestyle I was just like bro what the fuck yeah, so you bro. beat him yeah. yeah and that was it like thesaurus was the best from la yeah i know thesaurus. iron solomon was the best from new york it's spelled like thesaurus eh? yeah yeah that's, that's a mad it. name thesaurus yeah, but thesaurus yeah for sure bro and yeah justice took both of them out on the same day and no one in america could do that so that's what made it so like whoa this yeah, kid yeah. from australia and he was young as at the time yeah, probably like 23 or something Fucking hell. smashed him Heck yeah, yeah. so yeah, bro. So what? So you started, you organised to, to get these things, you be hosting these things. Yeah, well, so I got invited to do my first battle at the first Got Beef event, which was the yeah. first event of this new age style of battling yeah. in Australia, of a league, you know. 
And Where did this get held? Melbourne. So that was in Brunswick and Melbourne. Melbourne it was yeah. March 20th, 2010. And that's where I met Cursor. That yeah. was Cursor's like sort of first big battle outside of Sydney. I know he'd done a few freestyle ones there and stuff yeah. like that. But um, and Thesaurus was at that event. Was he? Yeah. So my first battle in Melbourne. I'm there on the side with the yeah. two-time world freestyle champion. Like holy shit, <laughs> I've manifested this. I was watching these rap battles yeah, on yeah, yeah. early days YouTube in Tasmania, and that's now mental. I'm in the same room with them. You know, so just that in itself just made me twice as obsessed with it. I was just yeah, like, yeah. let's go. You know, and just did as much as I could. That's crazy. Who'd you battle? Um, at the first event. Yeah, the first time. I battled a rapper from Brisbane called Case One. Yep. And this English fella called Sprungy. He's like a proper scouser from Liverpool. Was he? Yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. a piss head. <laughs> so he's just there going, oh, you're all <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> and I just bagged him out for being a scouser. Did you? Yeah, won <laughs> pretty easily. Dundee but, um, was rocking these things, eh? Yeah, so... Seeing heaps of him... Every time I see him... Oh, he's got mad songs, but he's, yeah. uh, most stuff I see from him is these type of things. Well, he's definitely, in the new age, the most achieved battler from Australia. He's battled twice in Canada, twice in England, uh, New Zealand, and he went and did a battle, like, in the hood in South Africa, yep. in a basement there. And you, no should, you should get him on here to tell that story, bro, because that's in a yarn South Africa. And a, yeah, bro, that's a yarn <laughs> and a half. All sorts of shit went down, yeah, as you I can, can imagine. imagine. Yeah, <laughs> But, um... So Dunners and I, we came up together freestyle and doing the early battles. And uh, he actually moved to Melbourne when all this kind of kicked off. But he was trying to focus on music. And, um, and he saw me doing all these battles. And he was like, man, this is sick, you know. And I was like, bro, you've got to come doing it, do it. So after 2010, because that was where I went really hard. I did like 10 battles in a year. Mm. And I went from the first one in Melbourne to by December, I was battling 360 up in, in Brisbane. And he was the... The man to battle at that point. Cursor yeah. was still on the, the you know, yeah. um, on the up. And then after I battled 60, I battled Cursor. And that kind of helped, you know, get the fans G'd up because I, I beat 360, yeah. but then I lost to Curse. Yeah. So it kind of set their match up even yeah, more, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. people have been asking for a while, especially just because they kind of represented different sides of the tracks. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah you I know, know there's so many different dynamics in that battle that led to a success. It's like, Melbourne versus Sydney. Yeah. You've got sort of like... Oh, that's where 360 is from, Melbourne. Yeah, he's from For some St. reason, Kilda. I thought he was from Adelaide. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's from St Kilda. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and um, so, yeah, man. Um, yeah, like you said, two different sides of the track, so... Yeah, that's it. And, yeah. like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, kind of like Lad versus, like, Melbourne, Metro, hip, Skater, hip -hop, uh, yeah. you know, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. trendy city kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just every dynamic, that's... It was such a good... Yeah, it just created that controversy, you know? Yeah. It hit a million views in a month. And this is 2000, I was, January 2012, it was released. That's mental. I mean, you using a month back yeah, then. That's back times then. 10 back. That's times 10 now. Exactly. That's, yeah, like 10 yeah. mil in a month now, you know. So with all of that, like starting to form, so you would have thought to yourself, obviously, Australian hip hop's really coming. Because before that, there was obviously Australian hip hop. Mm. And, but it was not like something that was like, big on YouTube that was big to the kids that was big like well, I guess YouTube wasn't really even big then it wasn't not really hey, look how far I don't even know do, bro do, do you forgive know me I'm from fucking jail bro when did YouTube yeah, yeah. Out, like, well YouTube <laughs> came out I think around 2004 alright yeah. but it wasn't like on everyone's phone to probably like 2013 so 14 thing, you know yeah. it was there were people watching YouTube but you'd have to watch it on the computer at home yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. oh so and it wasn't just a, a, like a really accessible thing nah it wasn't quite like that yeah. but um before that era, it was definitely all radio sort of pushed. It was still just as big, man. Like, was it? Yeah. I was doing supports for shows in 2006 and seven for people like Funkors, um, that were from Adelaide, Trials. Um, they have Funkors rap with Hoods Up Hoods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're a part of Certified Wise, yeah. which is like a larger crew from Adelaide. Yeah. Um, I was supporting people like Elephant Tracks, which was like The Herd, Thundamentals, and they were all sort of Sydney fellas back then. I met... Met Nick Loopy down, yep. down in Hobart. His spit syndicate were coming down. It was pretty much one venue in Hobart and we get all the who's who in Australian hip hop to come down. But it was packing out back then the way it's packing out now. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Like yeah, 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 the yeah. internet's definitely changed a lot. It, in, it's relatively the same. But it's yeah, relatively yeah. the relatively same. Relatively like, the same, yeah. I remember seeing Funk Wars like shutting down shows in 2007, hectic energy, Place is going crazy. There's a guy in a wheelchair crowd surfing. Chaos. No you know what I mean? Like, and it was huge. 
it was big enough for all of us to be like, who are the Funkors, bro? Tell me so, who are they? So Trials, <laughs> are they? Trials is a rapper from Adelaide. Yep. He now raps in AB Original with Briggs. Yep. And they've done... AB a, Original. AB yep. Original. You should check him out if you yeah, have I know Briggs. Bro. I follow Briggs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've done a lot, you know, in yep. the last few years. But Trials in his earlier days was, yeah, part of Funkors. You had Hilltop Hoods, uh, Crossbred Mongrels. They're all different Adelaide crews that yeah. kind of formed this big alliance. And... Um, yeah, Trials is definitely one of the best producers in the country. Do, do you find – sorry, let me cut you here because I'm yeah. starting to say something. Do you find yourself – I can see clearly in Australia two completely different scenes and like a lot of them don't know a lot of about the other. Yeah. I don't know how the, how the crossover is for that whole scene, mm-hmm. but I can tell you, lad, like for people in Sydney, maybe some people in Melbourne now – we got no. We we're into hip hop and we have this scene and yeah. it's got these people who get ten million views and it's big. It's a big thing. Yeah, I guarantee you, ninety nine percent of us have no idea about any of that history you just told us. Who any of those people are? For sure. Do you see that complete division? Massively, and I kind of like. I see it as it's definitely a population thing. Yeah. Like Sydney is definitely in its own sort of bubble based off population. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely become its own mecca. You know what mm. I mean? And. Um, like earlier days in hip hop, there was still this kind of street Sydney side, like Hijack and Torture. Mm-hmm. They were a part of this kind of old traditional Aussie hip hop yep. scene, but they were still from Sydney. They were still, you know, they were like yep. Hijack is, is was Bliss wearing. Is SO part of that scene? Kind of. Bliss, like <laughs> I know SO's from, he is from yep. out west. Yeah. And like I'm pretty sure he grew up in like Campbelltown. They were very clever, Bliss and SO, hitting that mainstream market at an early age. Yeah. When they came out, they toured all the unis across the country to yeah. all the young people. And they so they de- sort of sep- were separated, didn't they? Yeah, they definitely from early on. did their own thing. Yeah, and yeah. they made really good music. They weren't really riding the cultural trend. I love you know learning I mean. all this stuff from you. Yeah, so I'm like, learning from the OG lad of this wow, fucking you, thing, bro. lad. I, I'm stoked to hear Forget if I just pick, keep picking your mind. Go for it, bro. Who's that other... Like, I know this other Sydney rapper too, lad. Um, Dialectrics. He's one of the best rappers in the country. He's man. mad rapper, eh? He's fucking good. So is he a Sydney rapper that was part of that He's a part of that era. He's originally yeah. from Blue Mountains, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Um, same with Fundamentals. Yeah. But yeah, he was a part of that era. It was It's definitely Obese Records. Have you heard of Obese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obese Records. So, yeah. It was top hoods, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, what happened hoods. was Culture of Kings was an album that came out in the late 90s. And that was the first ever all Aussie hip hop compilation. It had songs from people in Perth, Melbourne, blah, yeah. blah, blah. So they had a Culture of Kings album launch and that was like the first time that that old school generation of Aussie rappers all came together and created that hub, you know what I mean? That brought all the attention to one spot. And Hilltop Hoods performed there along with like 750 Rebels. You've got, uh, you know, so many old school heads. Have you ever heard of Hunter? No. So Hunter is one of the like pioneers of hip hop out in Perth in WA and he passed away about 10 years ago from cancer. And he was, he was the guy Hilltop Hoods listened to when they were kids. Really? And so when Hunter passed, it was a big thing in the scene and we came together in Melbourne and had what was called the Hunter Cup, mm-hmm. which was a big footy game. And all the rappers from Australia came down and played against each oh, other. Oh, no way. Yeah, it was beautiful. And they raised like thousands of dollars yeah, for yeah. canteen cancer Hectic. and stuff like that. And it was a real positive thing for the scene. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, those early days, it was this thing called Culture of Kings album that brought everyone together. And I've no- I noticed this over the generations. It's when a wave comes through and it creates a hub. Yep. And the people that go to that hub, there's a lot of rappers. And then it's the hardest work and ones out of that moment that pioneer from it. So yep. back then it was Hilltop Hoods. At that show, the most rehearsed, the best set, that was Hilltop Hoods. Yep. And as the years kind of moved on, that became apparent as they got more successful and built themselves into what they are today. Yeah. It was the same with the battle scene when mine came together. Yeah. I was a part of that wave and all these rappers from all around the country came to this one spot. And then 360 and Cursor were the hardest work and ones out of that yeah. kind of wave. And then, you know, that shows with their legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then recently in the last five, six years, it was the grime wave that came together. Yeah. And that's where like Wombat, Nerve, Chillin' It and yeah. all those guys rose out of that wave. So yeah. it seems to me that every time a generation comes through the scene, it's through oh, we like this now. And 
culture of Kings was that first wave of like, we like rap. Yo, you know what I mean? Yo, but yo, when yo, mine yo, came yo, together, yo. it was like, we like yeah, battles. We like rap. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And as it evolved, yeah. it got more caught in its separate genres. Yeah. And then the new one. New That's th- mad. You yeah. mean soulful perspective. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah. And then um, the, yeah, the new generation all were into grime. Yeah. So Fracture, who's an English rapper, he's been out here for forever. I yeah. remember seeing Fracture doing grime in a club in Tasmania in like 2008. Yo. You know what I mean? But it wasn't until 2015 where all the kids that were, you know, nearly 10 years younger than me, Yo. they'd grown up watching this grime stuff. And then they all found each other, came together for this 50-50 grime event that Fracture put on, Yo. Scotty Hines and uh, those fellas. Know them. And Alex Jones mm. was a part of them as well. And um, yeah, once again, boom, Yo. then the generation comes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. So where's it at now? Well, I think it's ready for the next one. Yeah. It's, it seems to be about five to six years yep. that of another generation will come through. You know, as you, you see with different trends, they'll come through, they'll get everyone's attention. Drill was definitely the last big one. You yep. know, like when 1-4 dropped with their shit, everyone yep. in the country saw that and went, holy shit. You yeah. know? 1-4 definitely... Uh, look, uh, nah, a mixture between one four and and hooligan hefts and, and yeah, him as well. Yeah, yeah. You can't like that's definitely almost equally, if not almost, as big. Yeah, hundred yeah, um, percent. Probably a little less, to be honest. But they definitely, I noticed that they just definitely here in Sydney. I don't know. I, do people in? Um, it has to be. It has to. I know human nature. And I know personalities. Do the people in Adelaide and Perth and stuff like that? just completely disregard this new type of, of Everyone's rap. watching, bro. Oh, everyone? Everyone. Oh, because I thought there'd be some type because then it's like... There, bec- the, there's definitely a divide. Yeah. And a big part of... I think the biggest divide in, in what the Australian hip-hop scene is is the, the difference in what it's about. Yeah. And the thing is, for my generation, hip-hop was about people coming together. It, like, back then, if you hung out with rappers from around the country... No one's dads were around. Yeah. No one had any culture to hold on to. I loved it when you put up that video taking the piss out of Kyle Sanderlands and that for talking about culture. And you yeah. said these kids are creating their kids. own culture. And you're right, man. Kids, like bro. White Australia didn't have any culture. The most culture they had was I like the footy and getting pissed. But I, don't get me, I burn on Kyle Sanderlands. Yeah, I love it. And Jackie O. Yeah. For some reason, they think that it's okay to tease Kids tease children. There's grown yeah. people on the on the radio who always tease kids for adapting to a culture, trying to form themselves an identity as Australian kids. Oh yeah, and they take the piss out of them. Like, who 100%. the fuck teases kids? Why? Because one day someone that spoke in pig ladder and swore at you or yeah. asked you for a cigarette. Yeah. So now every kid that tries to identify as something, yeah. what the fuck else do we have here in Australia? Exactly. What are they supposed to be? Surfies or punks? Yeah. Like you were in the 80s. This is what they are. Yeah, Who 100%. cares if you got sworn at at a train station by someone that spoke Pig Latin? Exactly. Doesn't give you the right yeah. to tease children relentlessly. Yeah. And the stupid audience clap it. They love it. Yeah, like, I see sure, it for man. what it is, bro. You yeah, know what I mean? It's, it's definitely an interesting one. And it's, it's interesting watching this generation now and watching that Sydney has pioneered it. You know, I'm at Cursor in 2010. He was still living out in um, Macquarie Fields and living in Housos. And I watched his career, I watched his rise, mm. and then I watched his influence spread across the country. Like back then in Tasmania, we all wore baggy jeans. Yep. That's it. No one wore polo shirts, no yeah, one wore yeah. trackies or TNs. The old hip hop yeah. style, eh? Yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's only that down there. You oh, know really? what I mean? Yeah. 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 And um, Sydney definitely influenced that. Mm. And I remember a little while ago, you were. It was when you were going, you were learning heaps and you kind of, you were like, oh, who are these other old Australian rappers? You haven't supported this new movement. Yo. Thing is, everyone's watching, bro. Yo. Like Eminem still watches rap battles. Yo. You know what I mean? Like, if you love hip hop and it's your life, you're not going to not watch it. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's been interesting, you know, um, you're watching your perspective. And I love this opportunity to come talk to you about yeah. it. Because, you know yeah. why I made that video? Because I heard the song... Uh, Trem, yeah. Trem, Trem, uh, Animal Kingdom, yeah. Omega Man. I thought they're mad songs, bro. Yeah, bro. These lads are hectic rapper. Yeah, Trem's the, Trem's you know what I mean? the OG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and and the lady raps with Brad Strat. Yeah. Um, and, and those lads, anyway, you get the point. So mm. now I'm following these lads, you know, and like they're putting out stuff and it's like thing. On one hand, I'm watching that, bro. And you know, like, I wasn't even known then, right? Yeah. I didn't have no followers. My yeah, opinion wasn't sure. important. But I was watching them, right? 
and I'm supporting what they do, like, oh, that's hectic, liking their post, this and that. And then on the other hand, I've got, like, these rappers I'm following, like, and they're following all rappers, yeah. right? And I noticed that they weren't following any of the big rappers. Mm. They just weren't. Yeah, so, yeah. like, one four was getting literally, like, what was it, like a million views in, like, yeah. six days or something, four, uh, 24 well, wow. hours? Mm. It's just something stupid on one of their songs. And then I like, I'm, and every, it's going off. And then I go back and look at Chem's page and he doesn't even follow him. <laughs> and then I started, <laughs> man, it, and I started f f seeing yeah, a I little, you, you know what I mean? I'm like, I bah, I'm here supporting you because you're a mad rapper in 98. Yeah. And you can't even like give a follow to the biggest rappers in the country. There's something sus there. Well, There's a, is it resentment? Is it? Uh, well, I mean, Trem is definitely, Trem is cut from the original cloth. Trem yep. doesn't like any music made after 1993. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but Trem's, you know, he's living his life, man. He has yep. a family. You know, so many of those guys are just at a, another stage in life where, like, I, I was a talking... A lot of people said that. A lot yeah. of people said it's nothing against them, but these boys no, are just it. like... I, I was like talking to Trem about getting him down to Tassie and the most he's interested in doing is maybe come down and playing some records, you know, oh, really? like, yeah. The, so like he just guys, generally doesn't give a fuck anymore. It's not no, something well, specific. I know to, for a fact he's still working on music, but he's a craftsman, man. That yeah. album with Animal Kingdom, that took him 12 years to make. He no doesn't, way. yeah, everyone was waiting for Trem's album for, for a decade and he didn't care about anyone else. He sat there and made it perfect. He reminds me of like, you know, the sword maker and Kill Bill. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. a craftsman. Yeah. And anyone else can get fucked. Yeah. He doesn't care about hype. He doesn't care about popularity contests. Mm. He's about the craft. You know what I mean? And that's a lot of that generation were. Yeah. And there's definitely, you know, it's always harder watching a new generation come through because I feel like it happens with every generation. You want the older generation's respect and then you don't get it. Yeah. And then when you get to their age, story of the you, world. you realize, oh shit, no, actually they yeah. do respect me. I was just young and wanted attention because yeah. I was young and naive, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but like Wu-Tang? Yeah, I love Wu-Tang, bro. Who? Who in there? Who's the best out of Wu-Tang, bro? I've got my opinion, lad. Jizza. You like Jizza? Yeah, yeah. And it That's comes a with, shock to me. It comes with, I got to perform with him in Tasmania and really? I got to watch him live and that definitely made a bit of a difference. I yeah, also yeah. got to perform with Ghostface in, yep, in yep, Melbourne. Yep. But Jizza just stood out to me and when he performed, he like dragged his schemes out to trick the crowd. Did he? Yeah, and he was playing his own little game with the crowd because they went to say this line and then he wouldn't say it. And then oh, like, no way. <laughs> give a cheeky little green. And then, but it was this craftsmanship. Yeah, man. I love Inspector Deck. Yeah, yeah, Inspector yeah. Deck and Ariza. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, the rule of zigzag ziggle. He's, the, he's like the boss of him, brother. Yeah, That's man. how I say he's the boss of the gang. Yeah, like, straight you know up, what I mean? bro. Yeah. I got to support a model technique in Tasmania, bro. That's mental. It, that was, I knew you'd appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, that's man. mental. And that when was, was that? Active. What year was that? Uh, that was maybe 2011. Uh, no, 13, 14. 13, 14. It was when he last came out here with yep. Poison Pen. Yep, yep. Because Poison Pen used to host the battles in New York in grind time. Did he? Yeah, so yeah. when I ran into Poison and Immortal Tech, me and Poison already had a, a rapport. Yeah. Because I was, we used to be in this big group chat and I was in there for Australia and he yep. was in there for New York sort of thing. Oh, so, so it blew me out meeting Immortal Techniques, mate, and he was like, hey, bruv, how are you? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, we already had that rapport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I loved all that shit. But, like, because I had a chip on my shoulder from my dad not being there and being in America, and I was hanging around all these wannabe rappers in Australia, and everyone was rapping in American accents and shit, and that blew me out. Because in Australia? In Australia, yeah, yeah. it was definitely a massive trend I, uh, because yeah, that's, I see that, I see that was the influence. Yeah, you know? yeah. But for me, you know, and whenever I... My, my, you know, my American family have a heavy American accent. And because I was always jaded that my dad wasn't there and he was still in America, I ended up kind of hating, I cringed at American hip hop and I wanted to be more Aussie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that was the culture I was growing up with. So it was so interesting to meet rappers that had never been to America, rapping in American accents. When I'd been over there and rapped at school yeah. and came back and I didn't want to be like American at all. I wanted to be Aussie. If anything, you want to emphasize the Aussiness. Yeah, yeah 100%, yeah. bro. Yeah. And I looked up to guys like Hunter and Hilltops and all these sort of people, Trials, Vents, all these rappers that had that, you know, that brazen awkwardness in their fucking yeah, yeah. rap. And I was like, that's what I want to do, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, that's yeah, mad, though. It's interesting, eh? But tell me the yarn, lock. you went to jail recently. Yeah, yeah, I was a while ago now. But, yeah. um, so, you know, Hip hop was the thing that kept me out of trouble. Like I remember yeah. being one of one of my first battles um, in the mainland. 
I was at my mate's house, everyone's gloving up, you know, everyone's getting ready. I love how you, you call know. it the mainland. Yeah, yeah, it's the mainland. Is that a West, Tasmanian man. thing? It's an island thing. <laughs> it's an island it's thing. Like yeah. all across the world, they go, yeah. oh, we're going to the mainland. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. There's a smaller islands off Tasmania, yeah. and they call Tasmania the mainland. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's like, yeah, a term for that. Yeah. But, um, you know, you, growing up in Tassie, yeah. It's like there is Aboriginal culture in Tasmania, but mm -hmm. a lot of the community is disconnected from it. Mm -hmm. So they're not connecting to country and they're not actually going out there and making the most of the land down there. Yep. So, you know, there are a lot of people doing crime, doing all this sort of shit. And I've been in situations with a lot of my mates where they're getting caught up in that, mm -hmm. and gloving up and ready to go out, you know. And I'd be like, no, nah, I've got this battle in Melbourne next month. I'm not, get, you know, yeah. risking it. And so that was such a good thing, you know. And, and you know, I've always done graph and, you know, racked heaps of paint and fucking hung around and hung around, you know mm. what I mean? But it was these commitments in hip hop that kept me focused and yeah. away from doing all of that. And I already gave you a sense of pride and identity, which is what 100%. a lot of people in the streets are looking for. Exactly. And right. you would have already had it. You'd be like, I host this and I've got, even being in forums with Americans, it yeah. would have gave you a sense of responsibility. Oh, massively. So bad. that would have like, that's what people in the streets are searching for. Yeah. yeah look, I've got a name, I, this, I'm known for this. So you yeah. had that already, so you didn't need to do that. Exactly, yeah. bro. And, um, but yeah, so, you know, and doing gigs as a living, because I've been doing gigs since I turned 18, non-stop, like performing wherever I can. You're around drunk all the time. You're around hospitality, hip-hop gigs. Everyone gets heightened at the end of the night. It's like, show's over. Everyone's mm -hmm. drunk and fucking G'd up and ready to go, you know. So yeah. I got a little bunch of scraps over the years and copped a few assault charges and shit like that. But then... um. 2016, I went down to a Thundermental show to catch up with Tucker, because he's a good mate of mine. Mm -hmm. Had a good night, and we got real pissed, and I walked out the front of the pub, and this is the Republic, the same place I supported Jizza, the same place- Where's this uh, In the middle of North Hobart. All right, yep, yep. Same place I supported Jizza, same place I met Nick, you know, everything yep. like that happened at this pub. And I walked out the front, and there was a hippie, sort of anarchist sort of bloke, riding on the front of the pub, <laughs> form <laughs> one planet. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what are you doing, mate? And he's like, we need to come together and overthrow the corporations. And I'm yeah, like, I'm yeah. with you, bruv, yeah. but you're scribbling on my mate's pub. Yeah. Dundee's dad owns that pub. Yeah, yeah. You know, small town syndrome, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, he wouldn't fuck off. I ended up breaking his jaw in two places. Oh, no and, way. Um, yeah, he didn't go to you, hospital. What, one hit? Uh, there was a few. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I was like, fuck off, mate. Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. I just finally snapped. You yeah, know? Yeah. And I had other shit going on in my life. And I took it out on this. And um, yeah, so I broke his jaw in two places. And he didn't go to hospital. He just sat around smoking bongs for a week. Yeah. So it then developed into a life-threatening blood disease. And they had to put him into a coma for oh, a month. Fuck. And he nearly lost his month at life, the poor fella. Oh, you know? no way. And so, yeah, it was a pretty big court yeah. deal. And... You know, the newspapers in Tassie carried on and they were putting headlines in there like local rapper goes to prison for his hip hop hit and you yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah. um yeah, I got I got I got I got a real good lawyer and I got references from all my mates that are hip hop artists that work in prisons or youth yeah. drug and alcohol counselling and because I've done a lot of, you know, voluntary going into places, talking to kids about hip hop and the yeah. power it can give you to uplift yourself. And I had what did you get charged with? GBH with your GBH, yeah, yeah. 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 That's it, bro. So I had a stack of character references, yep. you know, and that really I kicked. I did really well, you know, and um, but then they appealed it. So I served a short sentence and then got out and um, then had to go back to court. And they went, nah, go back. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. So I ended up going in and out twice for the same Fuck. thing. But it was a blessing, bro, because, you know, hip hop was what kept me out of that for a long time. When I got there, I ran into all my old mates. Like, this is where you used to be, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, Tassie's small, so so was the jail, you know. There's yeah, only so one the boys jail in there, there. New York? Yeah, 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 yeah. Half of them I was on the street with when I was a kid, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and, like you um, said, it's a small place. And, it's, yeah, yeah, straight up. Bro. But I wrote a whole album in there. I did a battle in there. Oh, um, really? Yeah, battle. So in the medium section, protection's just up on a hill. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to go up there. Mm -hmm. But if you want to flog someone up there, you can get up there. Oh, you can go up there. Yeah, you can oh, get up really? there. <laughs> yeah, it's an awkward like standoff. It's yeah. the meerkats on the hill, you know. Yeah, fuck someone like um, here, they're in protection. Nah. It's like you barely get a word to them. I know, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty different down yeah. there. A lot of people say it's like a boy's home down there compared to a prison. It's a lot less yep. multicultural. So there's, you know, you don't have a lot of that divide and yep, gang right. sort of stuff. There are a couple gangs, don't get yep, me yep. wrong. But it's more like north versus south oh, really? rather than, you know, any racial stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I did a battle and I battled this from protection 
right on the line. He was standing on the other side and I was standing on this side. And like <laughs> no way. all the screws ran down because they thought it was a punch they on it. Arguing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, <laughs> but they all stood around and laughed and they had like bung eyes. So who won? The protection oh, or main? Nah, smashed it. Oh, bro. good. His name, was, his name was Dirty Steve. No way. And he was... <laughs> Bite and Jimmy the Junkie bars. You know Jimmy the Junkie off Houzos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got some raps. He was stealing his rhymes. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's burn comical, him, bro. bro. That's a full yeah. movie scene. Oh, I wish there's, there's big footage, yeah. but no sound or anything. Yeah. But what the fuck? Yeah, he had bung eyes, bro. So <laughs> all the units there are named after different rivers. Yep. So the one over here is called Rowallan, and the one over here is called Sorrel. And so I said shit like, I can't even look this in the eyes while I'm rapping. One's looking at fucking Sorrell, the other one's looking at Sir Ro Allen. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah, just simple you. setup, yeah. punches, comedy sort of style. Yeah, smash. They would have loved that. Yeah, and then yeah. I did a gig in there as well. When I got to minimum, they had a band room. So on New Year's Day, I convinced the Screws to let me bring the PA system out into the Oval. Yeah. And um, yeah, I performed the the album that I wrote in there to the whole yard. Fucking. And this one of the most powerful moments I've ever had in my career, bro, was while I was in there, a massive fan of mine who was from a family that a lot of the family are in there, he got executed with a shotgun. And the other guys involved were from the other big family in there, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. there's a lot of tension. You know, it happened, we see it on the news, people are jaying up, yep. waiting for everything to kick off. And so I wrote a song about like, it was all over drugs and all sorts of shit like yeah. that, you know, the same old, and I wrote a song about like, why are we doing this? You know, when it's the kids that are left behind and, uh, yeah, so by the time I got to perform that song in there, I was standing on the oval looking at the two families on either side and I did that song. And, yeah, like, you know, the chorus is like, he would have been here now if it wasn't for the drugs and it wasn't for, the, you know, all this, no. he would have been here now. And, man, I was just getting goosebumps just like oh, That's the crazy. whole time. And What, this album's out? Yeah, it's called, so, Risdom Prison. I decided yep. to call the album Risdom Wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, man. you know, like, I was only in there for a year, so I copped a bit of flack, like, oh, you reckon you're a jail now and all this yeah. sort of shit. But that's not what I was trying to do, bro. I just yeah. wanted to take my – as an artist, I wanted to take my experience and reflect it. And that album's for the boys, you know. Yeah. That album's for, for anyone that is stuck in the system down there, you know. Like, I'm so lucky to have hip-hop and – all these things and now you know i'm at a point where i can get paid to do graffiti where i used to get charged for it back in yeah, the day yeah. and all that sort of shit. That's it's, smart, yeah it's crazy yeah, yeah. but um i wanted to you know in on the inside of the album and i sent copies in after i released it you know and they're yeah. pumping them in the gym and shit. i said you know i just hope any of you boys that i've shared a couple laps with i hope you can listen to this and realize that anything is possible if you put your mind to it you know yeah hectic and man. yeah that's what i wanted to try to you know spread in there because mm. I'm not in there trying to I don't want to be a hard like I'm not trying to do any of that shit I'm not trying to be, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. all that shit not playing off it yeah, no. yeah but yeah. that was my experience and like if the new newspapers are going to run me down and you know there'll people on Facebook like oh he's a piece of shit scumbag I was like <laughs> I need <laughs> I need to flip this into something yeah, positive yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and I met a guy in there called Kane Richardson and he's definitely one of Tazzy's most pro prolific sort of fellas over the last 10 years. And he always wanted to rap, but he'd been locked up since the age of 11, bro. You know, he's 33 and he's done a total of 15 years. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he wanted to rap but never had the opportunity. So he went with the thug life. And he's, you know, you can Google him. He's mm. got five pages straight up. He run amok, you know yep, what I mean? Yep. And But when I met him, you know, we're 30 and he's like, I don't want to do this anymore, bro. I want to rap. So I kind of helped him take all his writtens. He didn't know how to flow, nothing. Yep. Just, you know, shoe boxes full of writtens. And um, when we got out, I helped him do an EP. And he's now been out three years. And, like, you know, between that, he'd never been out for longer than yeah. three months. Yeah. But it was this rap that gave him the carrot to focus on. And now he's working full time. He's got a house. He's got his daughter on the weekends. All this beautiful stuff. Yeah, hectic. And it was all through hip-hop, you know. Fucking nice. And... Um, so that's why I love your journey, bro, you know, yeah. because hip hop was that vehicle that pushed you in this direction, but it's led to you building such a crazy life yeah, yeah. with all this other stuff. You're right. And it's awesome to see you just comfortable loving life now, bro, you yeah, know, yeah. and it's inspiring other people. Yeah, man. Your journey is very important to all these fellas I'm talking about as well. Yeah. You know, and um, if you ever get a chance, man, try and get Kane Richardson on here because mm. yeah, him out. he's been through a lot of stuff and... Um, He's got a few other podcasts out there just about, you know, he's going up against the system down there for abuse that happened in the detention centre. Small town, man. The, mm -hmm. 
there was one Nazi family that ran the youth detention centre in Tasmania. A Nazi family? Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah. The, the manager of the place had swastikas on his car. No way. And everyone's like, this is cool. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't blinked at. Like, mm. it was, yeah. What a spin out. A lot of deep inbred corruption, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but it's all, it's all coming out now, you know? The yeah. redress scream and all that sort of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Fucking hell. So what have you been doing now? You're flat out, bro. You just come here. Yeah. He's catching a plane in how long? Oh, two hours? Two hours, yeah, back to Tassie. <laughs> I've got to let you go in a minute. Yeah, what have, what sure. have you been, what are you up to right now? You're going home? So at the moment, like I'm at a point where hip hop is my life. I definitely want to start a business where I'm doing more workshops and working with youth, songwriting workshops, uh, you know, murals, community engagement. That's where I'm at. You were bro. just doing that just then in yeah, Newcastle, so, murals and that. So the OG of Newcastle Tons flew us up to Newcastle, and there was a big picture festival, which is like a street art festival. Yep. And he ran like a family event where there's graffiti workshops, and they had like a big uh, wall that was graphed up for Doza, who was a writer that passed away, and mm -hmm. we did some performances. Excuse me. Yep. And um, yeah, that's where I really want to push it now. When I was up in Darwin a month ago, I caught up with a young rapper called Riley P. And he works full time in Dondale, doing workshops with all the kids in there, recording tracks and making video clips. Yep. And he's showing me video clips of young Aboriginal fellas inside Dondale rapping about wanting to get out. Really? And he can't release Dondale, it. Dondale, that's where Vola that's where was from. Dylan, yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. And, um, and seeing how powerful that was, and we ended up doing a song going out and doing a video clip out in the streets in Darwin, and I met all these kids because they'd just gotten out and the ones that I'm seeing in these videos, and that's where it is for me, yeah, bro. Yeah, Another shout out, so I just want to give to Optimus, bro, because Optimus is a guy in Perth that's been teaching hip hop in every prison over there for the last 10 years. He talked about that Optimus on the podcast. Yeah, is that the same sure, bloke? man. Yeah, same yeah, bloke, yeah, bro. Yeah. And he does, he does a lot, man. It's so interesting. We'll talk about that divide back just quickly before we mm. go. I do think the biggest divide in Australian hip hop is between the people that are using hip hop to as therapy for people and mm. are using it to help build community, society, mm. you know, take that negative stigma away. But the other side is that negative stigma that is driven by ego, is driven by a lot of crime, is mm. driven by, you know, clashing and tribalism. Yeah. Tribalism is the other big one of this gang versus this gang or this state versus this state. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, we're all humans would just be tribal. Yeah, yeah. We all want that mob. We all want our group, you know, we want to find our place, you know. And um, it's interesting you're seeing people rapping, you know, blowing up because they're rapping about their mates in prison. And then my other mates are over here working in the prisons. And Optimus's course has the highest rate of lowering reoffending rates in the country. Really? Yeah, man. Because he's empowering people yeah, yeah. through teaching them to rap, you know, and helping mm. them share their story and then embracing it and being proud of it. Even yeah. if it's, you know, like a hard story and, you know, you've got a lot of shame, you rap about it and own it. That's a proud thing. Yeah. You know, it can give you that sense of it, you know, yourself mm. and responsibility and accountability as yeah. well. Oh, that's cracker. He's so, that. yeah, it's mad, yeah. bro. And that's, yeah, getting back to that. And I, it'd be awesome to see one side can connect with the other and come together. It's yeah. a hard one because one side's going, oh, but these guys are carrying on and doing all this bad shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and the other side, they're like, yeah, well, these guys are just fucking around doing, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And there needs to be the bridge of the gap, I think, you know. Yeah. And um, I don't know if there will. I think that as it's it evolves. There's definitely a lot of Sydney-like street influence in it. In the rap that you're talking about, definitely. But you know what? It's because it comes from that place. Because the people here that rap, the biggest Sydney rappers and whatever this scene is, they're not hip hop heads in yeah. any sense of the word. And I can guarantee you that if you asked the boys from whoever, you know what I'm saying, all the the famous rappers here, mm. like how passionate are they about hip hop? They really wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah, it's not it doesn't come from a place of hip hop. It comes a place like they care about their suburb more. Yeah. I'm saying this is Sydney. This yeah, is yeah. how we are. 100%. They care about the suburb. They care about getting paid, looking after their family. Fuck the enemy. Like they care about that. Mm. And it's like, oh, I can project that through music. Yeah, you know what I mean. Where the 100%. other scene, it's like, no, I love hip hop. What can I do with it? Yeah. So that's like the biggest thing. If you, if I think here. That like these people, they're not hip hop heads. Hundred you know percent, I mean? bro. Rap yeah. and all all elements of hip hop have all evolved in their own ways. You know, mm. from like graffiti. Graffiti's so big now. Like 
street art festivals. A lot of the time, it's got nothing to do with hip hop anymore. Mm. It's this, and the same with rap. Rap's oh, way over here, and break dancing. You know, like we don't see break dancing much anymore, yeah. but in Japan, they're still having world break dancing championships. It's happening. Yeah. So it's not that much connected to the culture anymore. Yeah, yeah. It is you know, like- in those early days, if you rapped, you had to have a good graffiti hand style. Mm. That's how it was. Yeah. If you didn't, you're a toy. You know what I mean? It was, yeah, it was staunch yeah. like that. Like, yeah. you have to be able to graph as well as rap. Yeah, you know, yeah. like Trem, one of the dopest graph writers, bro. You might only see a piece every now and then. Oh, really? But every one of those guys had to be a burner as well. Yeah. It was kind of like the culture. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. it. The culture just keeps growing and evolving and changing in different ways. Yeah. It's but, good because I got to see like both sides of it. Because when I was young, so the older boys I looked up to, Ken Graffiti and have yeah. their little raps that they're not that they're mad rappers, but yeah, they're yeah. mad graphers and they got their little raps and their Do money makers on the well sly and, and stuff yeah. like that. So I got to see that side of it, even though I was never part of it, I was too young. Yeah. And then when I got out of jail, I see the other side of it. So I see yeah. the, the two complete, you know what I'm saying? The complete sure, opposites, bro. yeah. 100%. And I think like now the music's just for the boys around here, it's a catalyst to express themselves in as opposed to that, like the love and, of And it. uplift themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is, a lot of it's got to do with bravado as well. And, yep. But it is uplifting yourself. It is empowering yourself, you know. Yeah. I've watched so many fellas from, you know, especially New South Wales, it's definitely one that, like there was, there was hectic rapping in Melbourne back in the day. Mm-hmm. Shout outs to autism. Mm-hmm. There's this rapper from Melbourne called Autism. And if you met anyone, they'll tell you some yarns, you yep, know. Yep, yep. But there were hectic cunts that were living that life, you know what I mean? But it definitely... Uh, it was still there was a bit of shame in promoting it. Maybe you know what I mean. They didn't want to rap about fucking I'm a hard because it was people. This is where Curse has succeeded, bro. He went, I am the sickest. Yeah, I am the best. But that generation, no one had that confidence. Everyone was like, no, I'm not the best, man. That's fucking don't be on yourself like that. Yeah. And then Cursor came through and went, no, I'm the fucking sickest. Mm-hmm. Regardless of if he technically was or not. He believed in himself that much, which a lot of that older generation didn't have. We were mm. still like, nah. everyone in Australia were like, oh, do you think you're black because you're rap? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it yeah. was still kind of shamed out as yeah. well. So um, that self-belief, I think, is where the, the scene kind of went boof. And it yeah. came from this like curse. You know, he went, I'm from the fucking ghetto that you all take the piss out of. Yeah. And I'm fucking proud. And I'm the sickest. What? Yeah. And he laughed his way to the bank, you know, to where the radio wouldn't play him. And then now they're trying to play him. Like, please, Curse, let us play you. You know, and he, fuck off. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting to watch, bro. Yeah, yeah, but well. it was that straight confidence. And, uh, you know, back to Curse of Verse 60, it's a very interesting battle, depending on what you're going to judge the battle on. Mm. But when Curse got in his face and went, we're face to face, what you going to do now? Mm. That was a real moment in the room, bro. Because yeah. he ain't going to do shit. Yeah. Regardless of the raps, that was an alpha moment. You know what I mean? And Cursor alpha him on some street shit. And um, I think that was a big you yeah. know, divide that kind of helped build what's happening now. Because I know like 1-4 Hooligan, all these fellas we would have been young watching that. Of course. And that would have empowered it them. It stemmed from you know? that. Yeah, it 100%. It did stem from that. Yeah. yeah, you're right. And explaining it like that, it did stem from that. The whole se- A lot of the whole scene he stemmed from that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Cursor was put on by guys like Hijack and Torture. And you can watch those battles we were talking back from 2003. Hijack's on stage in a polo saying, you're a shit cunt, lad. You know what I mean? So that was still happening in Australian hip-hop. But at that point, everyone was kind of even on the trend. Adelaide, if anything, had more influence. Adelaide was the original sort of New York of Australian hip-hop. And when Certified Wise came out they were the first to pioneer a business in, in Australian hip hop. And that's why Hilltop Woods are still selling out stadiums yeah. and they're in their forties, you know, that, and that was an interesting too, watching the internet come up and it's like, Oh, these guys are doing these numbers. but They're not selling out stadiums. You know what I mean? Hilltop Woods, you can't fuck with them, bro. Yeah. Like they have, they're cemented in history now, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and they sell more tickets than any other artist in Australia. Yeah. So it's crazy. it's crazy to see that, both sides are still thriving. That, yeah. that old school generation, they're still fucking kicking. And this new school, and then this whole new wave is kicking more than ever. It's an exciting time, bro. Yeah, and well. I'm really excited to watch it keep evolving and see what's We're next. We're calling this episode The Evolution of Australian Hip Hop with Greeley. <laughs> Thank you, Thank brother. you very much, thanks bro. For me. Thanks for coming on, brother. Hey, no, thanks Mad for having bro. me, bro. Mad respect and yeah, big love.